Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today's video is going to be my go-to everyday spring makeup look. I have been going a little bit lighter on the eyes, a little bit lighter on the skin, so I thought it would be fun to show you my current favorite products in action. Let me know in the comments below which video you want to see next, and let's jump into it. So I'm going to kick it off with the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. This is my absolute favorite primer. It has been for probably six to eight months at this point. I feel like it just works so well with every single foundation that I use. I just love love this primer because it makes my foundation go on perfectly on top. It just moisturizes my skin. It makes it look really smooth and plump and hydrated. So no matter what foundation I go in with, whether it's more of a dewy foundation or a mattifying foundation, they all sit beautifully on top of this primer. So I do love my Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. It's still my go-to. It's my absolute favorite just because the coverage is amazing. But on days when I want to go a little bit lighter, I want something a little bit more natural looking but still get some coverage, I use the Physicians for formula, the healthy foundation, and I wear the shade LW2. It does have a doe foot applicator, so I just apply it directly to the skin. And this foundation is nice because you can sheer it out if you want more of a light coverage look, or you can build it up. And I do tend to build up the foundation just because I don't generally go for a very light coverage look. There are days when I do that, but they're not super often. If you guys want to see a video on like my actual 10 minute makeup routine where I use like four or five products, I can definitely film it for you. I'm using the Smashbox Blurring Foundation Brush just to blend this product out. It just blends out really, really beautifully. It doesn't, you know, tend to grab onto the skin. It doesn't look streaky or patchy. My skin's breaking out a little bit on my chin area. So as you can see, it's not completely full coverage. I will go in with like a second layer on certain areas but I feel like it looks really beautiful on the skin. It has a gorgeous, almost like glowy, natural, dewy finish. And I don't know, like I have oily skin and I feel like I hear mixed reviews. Some people who have oily skin like it, some people don't. Same thing with dry skin, but I really truly like it. It's one of the only like lighter coverage foundations that I really reach for. I tend to go in with a full coverage foundation, but since I discovered this one, I've really been reaching for it fairly often. And I think it looks a little bit light on camera, but it will all kind of come together. I tend to go in with like a lighter foundation because in general I feel like foundations oxidize and you know once I apply my powder and everything like that it tends to work out. I'd rather my foundation be a little light than a little dark just because I hate when like I have that like orange line, you know what I mean? So I'm just going to apply a little bit of concealer, nothing too crazy. I'm using the ColourPop No Filter Concealer and they just added a bunch of shades and kind of switched up the numbers. So I'm using the shade Fair 08. I feel like this shade is a little light for me, but the undertone is actually perfect. So again, once I kind of go in with everything, it does tend to match a little bit better. And then I'm just going to use the Smashbox Cream Cheek Brush to blend this out. The ColourPop No Filter Concealer is my absolute favorite just because the texture is amazing. It's so smooth, it's so blendable, and I feel like it just goes on beautifully. You can build it up if you want a little bit more of a full coverage look, or you can sheer it out if you want something a little bit lighter coverage. So I definitely recommend it. I love that they expanded the shade range, and it's affordable. It's only $6, so it's definitely worth checking out. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the Urban Decay Velvetizer to set my under eye concealer. There's something about this powder that just locks my under eye concealer into place so well but I love this powder for mixing into my foundation to make it a little bit more full coverage and setting my under eye concealer. I do not know why, but this is like the only powder that locks my under eye concealer into place so well. But I just use this random brush. It doesn't have a name on it. I think I got it from Amazon and I take a little bit of the powder and just lightly buff it over the concealer. Nothing too crazy. I just want a very light layer to lock it into place. But a lot of days when I'm just going for like an easy everyday look, I'll use the Catrice Prime and Fine Mattifying Powder. This one is translucent, so it's great because it doesn't add any extra coverage, but it still sets everything into place really nicely. And I'm just using the e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush to set this into place. So all I do is dip the brush into the powder and stipple it onto my face. So as you guys can see, it does kind of mattify and set that foundation into place, but you can still see like freckles and blemishes, so it's not giving me like a completely full coverage look. Okay, I'm going to move on to eyes, and then I will do my brows and the rest of my face. So I'm going to prime 
dry my eyes with the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion just to kick things off. I'm just using the Smashbox All Over Shadow Brush to lock my eyeshadow primer into place just so any other shadows that I place on top will blend really easily. So for eyeshadow, I'm using the Juvia's Place Nubian Eyeshadow Palette. My camera throws off the color of this palette for some reason, like these neon colors just completely do not get picked up by my camera. I've been enjoying this palette a lot. It took me a little while to actually get into it for some reason, but now that I've been using it, I just enjoy the formula. I feel like the formula is so different than a lot of the other palettes in my collection. It's almost more of like a creamy formula and I just really enjoy it. So I'm going to take this color and just blend it into the crease and then I'm going to take this color and place it all over the lid and that's literally all I do. But I like this color a lot just because it adds some definition to the crease and I usually do, I think I got a little bit too much. Let me just take a clean blending brush and blend it out. I don't want anything too crazy just because I'm going for a really light natural look. Some days I'll skip eyeshadow but when I have time to go in I do feel like it's nice to kind of define my eyes a little bit and add some shimmer to the lid just because you know, it's kind of fun. I feel like eyeshadow is really fun and I love doing my eyeshadow and going in with like bright colors or smoky shadows or a really like warm intense eye look. But honestly, I've been a little bit lazy these days. I feel like I like to spend more time on my actual like complexion rather than my eyes. And then sometimes I'll go in with the same color and just kind of really focus it on the actual crease in the outer corner rather than blending it pretty much up to the brow bone just to add extra definition, but I don't like to go in with a darker shade just because I do wanna keep this look really light. So I'll just take this same exact color and really focus it right in the crease in the outer corner. Then I'm just going to use the Smashbox Full Coverage Shadow Brush and pick up that really shimmery shadow. I love this because it just adds a lot of light to the eyes, but it's just a really quick and easy way to do that. You don't have to go in with anything too crazy. I like these Juvia's Play shadows though because they feel really creamy. Like I really love the formula. So I've actually been skipping eyeliner completely. I love a good winged liner look, but honestly when I'm going for like an everyday look, I just go in with the Smashbox Precise brow and liner brush and then I'll take the brown shadow from this palette. Now this brown shadow is pretty red toned and I know not everybody is into like red toned eyeliners or really red browns so you can go in with like the cooler toned brown if you are a fan of that. I like the warmer brown. I feel like it just kind of complements my eyes better so I just take the liner brush, dip it in and then line my eyes. And then I will just finish up with mascara. So I'm using the Essence Lash Princess Volume Mascara and this is my go-to. It's just such a good go-to mascara. It makes my lashes look voluminous and dramatic but at the same time it lifts and curls them. This is honestly just such a good everyday mascara but you can also build it up for more of a dramatic look. Okay, I just finished the majority of my mascara off camera because I do take a little while to actually build up the product because I do like pretty dramatic lashes. I used it on the top and on the bottom Bottom. I did go in with the Butter London Stroke of Wow Volumizing Mascara as like the finishing touch on top just because I feel like this kind of adds just like a little bit of extra length. And then I did go in with the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in the shade Honey Dude on the lower lash line. I love using a nude on the lower lash line just because my eyes have a tendency to be a little bit red because I have allergies and my waterline is always really red. So I feel like this just kind of neutralizes it without adding anything too crazy to the eyes. So that is the eyeliner. Look. So moving on to brows, I have been using the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Brunette. I go back and forth between Brunette and Espresso. I feel like Espresso is a little bit too dark. Brunette is a little bit too red toned, but I'm going to go in with Brunette today. So I have been trying to get the hang of brow pencils. If you guys have been around for a while, you've probably heard me talk about this. Sometimes it's a struggle, so if I don't have a lot of time, I won't even try because I do, like I feel like I'm still learning, but I just start by brushing them out and then I take the pencil and I I just do my best to fill them in. I feel like I don't struggle too much. First of all, this brow is so much better than this brow, so I feel like I don't struggle too much with this brow, but when it comes to this one, it's a little bit more difficult. And also when it comes to the front of the brow, I really have a hard time with the front. I will take the brow pencil and kind of fill in the main part of my brow, and I really start to define the bottom of it, and then I fill in kind of above that and work on the tail, and then I save the very beginning of the brow for the end, just because I really struggle with the beginning. 
everything. So sometimes it takes me a little bit like going back and forth, fixing it with concealer, but I just try to make hair-like motions. I comb it out. It's kind of difficult because I don't have a lot of hair in the front of my brow, so it's kind of hard to fake it if you don't have anything there, and it can have a tendency to look drawn on. But I feel like even with the brow pencil, it looks a little bit more natural than it does with just the powder for me. So I just do my best to kind of draw it on, spoolie it out, and you know, just do my best. So after I mainly fill it in with pencil, I do go in with a little bit of powder. This one is the Anastasia Brow Powder Duo in the shade Dark Brown. And I actually just take the lighter shade. I used to fill in my brows with the darker shade or mix them, but I feel like the lighter shade just adds a little extra, like it makes them look a little bit more full without making them look too dark. And I have a tendency to be kind of heavy handed with my brows. And then I will finish up by locking them into place with the Essence Make Me Brow Eyebrow Gel Mascara. I I love this product because not only does it lock your brows into place, but it does have little fibers in it. So the fibers just make your brows look a little bit more natural. It adds some volume. So it's nice because I feel like sometimes when I go in with the brow pencil or a powder, it just kind of covers up my brow hairs. And this just makes my brows look a little bit more textured, a little bit more natural, I guess. So I like finishing up with this product. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there with the brows. They definitely don't look perfect. I feel like brows are such a struggle for me. I just wanna nail down like a quick and easy brow routine. I try to make them look better and then it just ends up being like an all day process. So I have to call it quits for now. I feel like they still kind of look a little harsh in the front, but I'm working on growing them out. I have not plucked them. I haven't done anything with them. So I just want to grow them in a little bit thicker. I am using the Grande Cosmetics Brow Serum. So I'm going to use the Becca Sunlit Bronzer in the shade Capri Coast, and I'm just taking my Wet n Wild large, like fluffy powder brush. I need to wash my brushes, so don't judge me. <laughs> but I'm just going to take this to bronze up my face. I usually just go in around my cheeks and then on my forehead, my jaw area. I honestly don't do anything too precise. I just want to add a little warmth to my skin. I really like this bronzer because I feel like it is a matte bronzer, but at the same time, it has a very slight sheen. So it just looks really natural on the skin and it adds a little bit of dimension without being too flat or too matte, if you guys know what I mean. So when I'm done bronzing up the skin, I just take a clean fluffy brush. This one is from Eco Tools. It is the full powder brush. And I just kind of lightly go over and blend everything out really well. I don't want any harsh lines. I don't even go in and contour anymore, to be honest, even when I'm doing like a really full coverage look. I've been using my e.l.f. baked blushes a lot. So I'm going to use the shade Rich Rose and the Smashbox Sheer Powder Brush. And I just get a bunch of blush on the brush and I love Love this brush because it gives me a really diffused application and I just kind of apply this very very lightly just to add a little color to the cheeks but honestly nothing too crazy. I do like these blushes because they have a very slight sheen to them so again they just kind of add to that like natural glowy skin look. And then again, I'll just go in with the Eco Tools brush and blend everything out. So for highlight, I'm taking the Wet n Wild Tapered Highlighting Brush and the Elf Baked Highlighter in the shade Moonlight Pearls, which again has been one of my go-tos. I've just kind of like rediscovered my Elf Baked products lately. And I'm just going to highlight my face. I've been really enjoying this one and also Becca Cosmetics Opal. And I literally just like don't do it super precisely. I do my cheekbones, but I also do like this area of my face just because when you look at me like straight on, I like how my cheeks look really glowy right here too. But I love the e.l.f. baked blushes, baked highlights for like everyday wear just because I feel like they're nothing too intense. They're just really pretty. And then usually I'll just take whatever highlighter I'm wearing on the face and just kind of put that in my inner corner just to brighten it up just a little bit. I always take a little foundation and cover up that freckle on my nose just because I like a really seamless look. And then once it dries, I just go over it with powder. So for the lips, I usually switch it up. I either do a really dramatic, bold, like orangey red lip, or I'll do the Wet n Wild lipstick in the shade Bare It All, which is just a good go-to nude. But a lot of times I just go in with a gloss because it's completely easy to use. It's really effortless. So today I'm going to use the Fenty Beauty Gloss and just apply that without any lip liner or anything just for a really natural look. So I wanted to switch up the lip color. I do love the Fenty Gloss so much and I wear it all the time, but honestly my go-to lip combo has been the Wet n Wild Lipstick in the shade Bare It All with the ColourPop Lip Liner in the shade BFF2. So I wanted to kind of do my favorite lip combo of the moment to complete this look. I think my next video is going to be more of a dramatic look, probably like a purple smoky eye or something similar. So make sure to stay tuned for that video. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.